The use of probiotic supplements is not recommended for people who have IBD, such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Please follow us on Instagram at High Carb Health and don't forget to click on that green H so you follow our stories and get to see everything that we eat and do throughout the day. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you are notified of all future videos. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about a new report that's been released, which is the guidelines or the yearly guidelines of the American College of Gastroenterology. And they've come out with a statement position saying that the use of probiotic supplements is not recommended for people who have IBD. And this is consistent with the science because there really isn't enough around ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease and other forms of IBD to recommend probiotic supplementation for these kind of diseases. So what they're saying here is that people should not be re recommending probiotic supplements for someone who has ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease or any other form of IBD unless they're partaking in a clinical trial because the evidence just isn't strong enough and therefore no one should be recommending probiotic supplements to people with IBD because we don't know the benefits, the pros, the cons, what's going on and if we are we're just doing it based on unknowns so there's no real evidence or science that backs it and this is one of the reasons we don't recommend probiotic supplements to our clients either. What really got me interested in probiotic supplements was this study here that explained that people who didn't take probiotics actually recovered their microbiome faster than those that did. Now what I'm talking about here is a broad spectrum probiotic with 11 different strains and the people who took it recovered their microbiome slower than the people who did nothing. And so it was quite an interesting study for me. Obviously we need more research to uh, determine whether that's going to be something that happens more often. But realistically the advice is that you should only be using probiotics if you have a specific target in mind or you know exactly the type of microbe that you are targeting to replace. If you don't know that and you're just taking a probiotic because you think it might be a good idea, that's not really going to solve any problems and in fact it might be more harmful for your gut bacteria than beneficial. One of the other issues we have with probiotics is that, well supplements in particular, probiotic foods are a little bit better in, in our opinion, uh, but the supplements in particular they get our body reliant on these probiotics. And if we've got to keep taking probiotic supplements to improve the microbiome, then there's something that we're not doing right. There's something diet-wise that we're not doing well enough to make sure that our gut bacteria is in a place where it can be in symbiosis long-term. And one thing that we really work on is that uh, the evidence tells us that plant foods in particular provide the right breeding grounds for symbiotic bacteria. This is the type of bacteria we want in our body and when we feed these uh, symbiotic bugs, plant foods that are full of uh, fiber, that are full of resistant starch, that are full of microbiota, accessible carbohydrates, they seem to thrive in that environment. They seem to multiply and grow their colonies. And if we feed our bodies full of uh, animal foods, uh, animal proteins, meat, dairy, eggs, junk food, oils, we are feeding the dysbiotic bacteria, the so-called bad bacteria that we don't want in our bodies. And therefore we are feeding the bugs that we don't want. So if we focus on plant foods and a good diversity of plant foods, which is really important, we need to have a good diversity in our diet to be able to uh, get the best type of microbiome that we want. Then we are doing everything that we can to make sure that our microbiome is adjusted to the way we want it to. And probiotics, at this stage, there's no real evidence to support them. Uh, if you're taking them, just be careful because unless you know exactly what you're targeting, they may be doing you more harm than good. And the American College of Gastroenterology is telling us that uh, there's not enough evidence, there's a knowledge gap on how effective probiotics are in terms of their effectiveness for people who have IBD. Uh, the other thing that uh, is a real concern is that there's no real regulation of supplementation industries and therefore the companies that make probiotic supplements there's no real regulation we don't really know what's in there and you know who knows whether you're getting anything beneficial in that supplement 
because you just have to go by the company's word that what's on the bottle was actually inside the pill. And for us, it's not good enough. Uh, the vast majority of clients, in fact, we don't recommend probiotic supplements for any of our clients. Therefore, you know, the clients that heal on our program have not relied on probiotic supplements to get them better. Okay, so that was just a quick video. I thought that was really important because of this recommendation that was uh, announced by the American College of Gastroenterology. And I think it's really important for everyone. Let's not do things just because someone said so. Let's make sure that there's evidence behind it. Make sure there's actual science that supports that decision. And if there isn't, then we should be looking at what the science tells us. And that is that eating whole plant foods is the best decision you can make for your gut bacteria. And probiotics, there's no evidence. The studies that show it can cause more harm than good uh, shows that doing nothing might even be better than taking the um, broad spectrum or the wide spectrum probiotic supplementation. Uh, if you want to see more information about probiotics and gut bacteria, just uh, check out this video up here where I go into a little, little bit more detail on the topic there. Um, but if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification icon that will notify you of all our future uploads. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, make sure you eat plants and lots of them. Take care and see ya. Give this video a thumbs up if you know what it's like to live with IBD and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This channel is designed to help people recover from colitis, Crohn's and any other form of IBD. You can always head to our website, highcarbhealth.com for a free 30 minute consultation from anywhere in the world. And remember, there is a life after colitis.